My days working, taking care of my little ones can be a lot. I checked out care.com and it was so easy for me to find local, experienced, and background check sitters. Finding our babysitter was way more affordable than I thought. Care.com makes it super easy. Search for qualified candidates. You can view their profiles, read reviews and ratings, check their availability, send messages directly, get the help that you need. Care.com should be every person's go-to. I'm Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. And I'm Scott Jason with Fog.net. This is a replay of WIBW's TV show, The Drive. Here's this week's episode on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network. Good evening, Wildcat and Jayhawk fans, and welcome to The Drive, sponsored by FlintHillsAuto.com. I'm Tim Fitzgerald of GoPowerCat.com, and the man to my right is Scott Chasen of Fog.net. We got two winners this weekend. Two winners. Two winners. In a way. Yeah, it, moral victories, I think. I, I think KU here. is in the, in the phase of they'll take that moral yeah. victory. The victory would have been better, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but what happened in Austin was head turning. A little bit of a basketball score or a Pac-12 half of a football yeah. score. They didn't quite reach 90 points or whatever that one game was. But. Yeah, so we, we do it on occasion except moral victories here at The Drive. You can interact with us on social media at facebook.com slash The Drive Show, on Twitter at The Drive 13, and of course answer our weekly poll question and make your game predictions at thedriveshow.com. And remember, if you ever miss an episode of The Drive, you can listen to an audio only version that will appear each Monday morning in the form of a podcast at both gopowercat.com and fog.net and we start things off with our two minute drill because that's how we roll. <laughs> the two minute drill is sponsored by Hula Hands. They've been expecting you. Now let's eat. Well, sparked by a 61 yard fourth quarter quarterback run by Skylar Thompson. Kansas State pulled out a 24-17 victory over TCU on Saturday to move the Wildcats to 4-2. and two. How did the Cats earn coach Chris Kleiman his first big 12 victory. It was really a story of persistence. I mean, they started the game with a blocked punt and set him up on in good field position and got a quick score and got out to 7 nothing. And, and I think it was good for the mentality of this team to uh, play from the lead for most of the game. It was either tied or they were ahead for the entire game. And uh, boy, they, they certainly came up with plays when they needed them. That TCU defense is very, very good. But K-State was able to convert uh, four of their opportunities to score into three touchdowns and then the field goal. Some miserable tackling throughout for most of the game. Let's be real honest. TCU appeared to be the better team, but it wasn't showing up on the scoreboard. It showed up in the stats. And how about this shocking statistic? Kansas State ran the ball 34 times on 33 of those uh, runs. They had 32 yards. I think I got that back. On 32 of those runs, they had 33 yards. And then they had a 61 yard from Skylar Thompson. The, the, Skylar ran a draw play and just it parted like the Red Sea and K-State got the victory because it set up a touchdown. It was an amazing play by Skylar Thompson and the defense stood up and got some things done at the end. It wasn't pretty, it wasn't great, uh, but it was a relief for Chris Kleiman and probably Gene Taylor, athletics mm -hmm. director, to get that first win at Kansas State. And it all matters at the end of the day. It said 24 for Kansas State, 17 for TCU. Move on to the next game. When you're running the ball, not moving it a lot, but you still have that big play potential, right. I think that can make a difference. How would you assess the run game top to bottom from that game? Well, the offensive line was poor, bad. They weren't good at all. Um, they got blown back off the ball quite a bit. But what I find interesting is just the simple idea that you are going to run the ball and run the ball and run the ball makes the defense keep an eye on the run. Uh, so that they don't break that big run and Kansas State threw the ball more effectively. Even though Skylar Thompson had some issues, they made plays in the in the passing game that they haven't been making. Mm -hmm. They got into the end zone, which they had only done twice in the past two Big 12 games. They did it three times this game. So they kind of seem to settle into a little bit more of a rhythm here, uh, at least play to an identity. And we'll see if it carries over into next week. Well, maybe not. <laughs> we'll get to that. KU football changed offensive coordinators during the bye week and then erupted for 48 points against Texas. 48 points at Texas. <laughs> Scott, how much of that offensive outburst was due to Brent Deerman taking over? And I'm going to add this in there. Losing 
with a buzzer beater field goal, 50 to 48. How much does it sting? Yeah, well, look, I, I think the Brent Deerman effect was evident. There was a, a touchdown drive where it was like RPO, RPO, RPO. Oh, look, you're in the end zone for Kansas. And uh, look, when Brent Deerman took over, there was a lot of talk about that. The RPO and maybe, you know, is Kansas going to spread it out more? I think people maybe lost sight of uh, the idea that Brent Deerman likes to run the ball at Auburn when he was an analyst. He was focusing on getting those guys to the edge in the run game. The first thing he said to Puka Williams when he was introduced as the offensive coordinator was, we are going to get you to the edge. And look, Kansas found different ways to get its number one playmaker involved, the Jayhawks. Uh, I think they had over 500 yards of offense, over 250 yards in the run game, and something like 300 yards in the pass game. They gave their playmakers on the outside a chance. And this is all the Brent Deerman effect. Now, uh, it's funny, I tweeted uh, after the game that Kansas should look into restructuring his contract because the Jayhawks have extended him. I think he's technically there for two years, but they can keep him for as many as six. They can kind of keep extending him at a, a lower salary, but right now, Brent Deerman can be bought out for $500,000. I do not believe there is a buyout if he takes an FBS head coaching job. You put all of that together, you have a few more performances like this, and people are going to start calling. I, I think what Brent Deerman did at the NAIA level at Bethel, and we've talked about this on, that on, on this show, that he showed that he can lead an offense. Now, there were some questions. Can he do it at the FBS level? You saw the Boston College game, another 48-point perform performance from KU, and you say, well, hey, some some of those principles can work. We, we saw those same principles again. It doesn't mean they're going to work in every game. Kansas is not going to average 40 points a game. There are going to be defenses that are that are scouted, that are prepared much better for what KU has. But we saw what happens when Brent Deerman takes control of an offense and gets control. He's allowed to call the game his way. Kansas put up 48 points. I'm not sure it was a huge fluke. No, it, they looked really good. One, Puka Williams is back. Mm -hmm. 190 like, rushing yards. That looked like Puka. Mm -hmm. uh, and two, what really impressed me with KU's persistence. They get down there, they're in a position to tie it up with an extra point, it gets blocked and returned, they're down by three. Mm -hmm. They still find a way to answer, they still find a way in. They kept making plays and getting in the end zone. And at the end of the day, it took Texas getting the job done. Texas won the game more than KU lost. How about that last drive? You, you go down the field, you get into the end zone, then you say, hey, we're going for two, and then you get it. That's not yes. Kansas football. That has not been Kansas football. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty amazing to watch. Baylor and Iowa State both won Saturday and now are sitting up high in the Big 12 standings. Are either or both of these teams legitimate? It's a tough question. It's unfair that that got thrown to me first because I, I don't know what yeah. to do with either of these teams at this point. I mean, Iowa State looked like one of the most disappointing teams in the conference. I picked against Baylor last week. We'll get to that later. I, it, it's so difficult to know. I, I still think looking at the conference top to bottom, feel really good about Oklahoma. Then you have kind of that next grouping of teams. But uh, what Baylor did, at, at least scoreboard watching and, and kind of going back over that game, not necessarily watching it live, that really impressed me. I was not expecting that. I was expecting Oklahoma State to win this game outright. So, uh, you know, hats off to Baylor for this one. Uh, a side comment, Oklahoma State's uniforms are awesome. KU's <laughs> uniforms are awesome. I'm turning into a uniform guy unintentionally. Mm. OU and Baylor are tied at 7-0 uh, overall, 4-0 in the conference. Baylor looks really good. That defense is holding it up there, and now they get enough offense. UT and Iowa State are both 5-2 and 3-1. And and Everyone else in this conference is below 500. Not 500, below 500. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're seeing a real division right now in the conference. Uh, and Oklahoma State has to be an utter disappointment because they look so good against Kansas State, and now they've lost three in a row. It seems to have spiraled out of control for the Cowboys. But Baylor, I think, is legit. Baylor's now above Texas in the national rankings. They're, well, I think, 14 in the AP. Man, it's there's a good there's good teams here, but I still don't know if anyone can beat Oklahoma. Oklahoma's up next for <laughs> Kansas State. And I, I just don't think it's going to go well for the Wildcats, which one of those games you go play it and you move on to the next week. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, I, I wasn't on the show last week, but I certainly watched that Oklahoma-Texas game, and that showed me that, you know, most people thought Texas was that number two team, and Oklahoma was miles better than them. Yeah. Should have been up. You know, if you, you avoid a couple of those turnovers, three, four touchdowns would not be out of the realm of possibility to be up by that in the first half. They won a one-touchdown game. It was more comfortable than a one-touchdown game. Still going to say Oklahoma way up at the top, but look, eventually Baylor's going to be undefeated, and I'm still going to be saying, how, how good is Baylor? They're headed to the college football playoff. Max Duggan for TCU ran for more than 100 yards on the K-State defense. He is not a running quarterback. Hmm. 
Jalen Hurts, if they don't tackle well, if they don't take good approaches and angles, they're in huge trouble. Mm -hmm. They might just hand him the Heisman in post game. Yeah. It's, they'll, they'll bring it. It'll be yeah, on the field yeah. like, uh, like they do with the trophy sometimes. Now a quick look at your poll question results. And poll questions are brought to you by Filman 11, your go fast, mm -hmm. look good, play hard, custom shop. Well, last week's question was, when will Oklahoma lose its first game this football Never. season? We go to the results uh, in Big 12 play, taking 15% of the vote in the Big 12 championship game, taking 15%. My pick, college football playoff, 50%. Sooners are going 15-0. and 0. I think there was a baby in there, 20% uh, of the vote. Yeah, Aaron, the producer, left the baby out. Hmm. And that's just cruel to leave the baby out. <laughs> For sure. Here's this week's question. KU football scored 48 points in game one with the new OC. How many points will the Jayhawks score next week versus Texas Tech? Here are your options. 0 to 14 is A, B is 15 to 24, C is 25 to 34, or D, 35 plus. Make your votes over at thedriveshow.com. 48, exactly on the head, not a pick. They've scored that twice this year. Watch out. This will do it for this half of the two-minute drill, but we will be right back with more on KU and K-State on The Drive. If you're in the market for investment-worthy bags, watches, and fine jewelry, Rebag is the answer. Rebag is a luxury resale marketplace where each piece is carefully vetted and verified by experts to ensure quality and authenticity. If you're in the market, use Rebag to buy and sell finds from the world's top brands, including Hermes, Chanel, and Cartier. Head to Rebag.com to get 10% off your first purchase with code REBAG10. Shop today at Rebag.com. That's R-E-B-A-G.com. And use promo code REBAG10 for 10% off your first purchase. Purchase. Welcome back to The Drive as we continue our weekly two-minute drill. The two-minute drill is sponsored by Hands. They've been expecting you. Now let's eat. Now that K-State has won a Big 12 game, Fitz, what do the Wildcats need to do to keep the momentum going Chris Kleiman's first season? Well, you know, honestly, they need to get through this Oklahoma game. Look, you still got a shot. I mean, Kansas just proved it at Texas. You're never going to count out a game and just consider it a loss. But in reality, this is a horrendous matchup for Kansas State, a team that's struggling to run the ball and can't really tackle very well and gives up big plays because of bad angles and bad fits on defense and all of those things. They were better against TCU. They have to make a giant leap forward if they really want to compete with Oklahoma that has so many weapons, both you know running and throwing, and now they have a legitimate defense. So Oklahoma, I, I personally think, is going to cruise through the Big 12 Conference. But Kansas State needs to just get through this game, stay healthy, and then they come to Kansas for a game that gets really intriguing mm -hmm. now, but they have a lot of those, if you want to call them 50-50 games, but if you look at those standings, they have a lot of games uh, after Oklahoma that fall in the realm of winnable. Kansas, West Virginia, Texas Tech among them, uh, and then they also go to Iowa State. They're at four wins right now, mm -hmm. so there are a couple from bowl eligibility. And really, if you're Chris Kleiman, your goal here is, you know, just to keep improving. And he made this very clear. For him, it's really not about the wins and losses in this first season. It's about getting the, the foundation of the program set. But it would help that foundation if they can get to six wins, get to a bowl game, mm -hmm. get those postseason practices. Just keep stringing along and try to get better. The program pretty clearly has a long ways to go. They don't have enough talent. They don't have enough depth. They don't have enough of everything. And that's why a coaching change was needed at this time. And, and now Chris Kleiman uh, is kind of in the reality phase of the program. He started off saying it's not a rebuild. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon it be, clearly became a rebuild. Yeah. Uh, so the, they've got a lot to work out. But that win over TCU was enormous because they found a way to win. Uh, I was afraid a loss would mean a real spiral for the program mm -hmm. because in all likelihood they'd been 0-4 going to Lawrence. And it got really interesting at that point. Let's put it this way. Split your next two games. What are, what are fans thinking about K-State after that? Well, I think uh, this win was huge for the fan base, too. Mm -hmm. it, it helped them kind of feel a little bit better about things. They can still see the problems, but it didn't end in a miserable defeat like Oklahoma State and Baylor. Uh, so, I, you know, I think really it comes down to winning at Kansas. Mm -hmm. If you're K-State, you don't want to lose to Kansas because it's something you haven't done very often, and that would get your fifth win and really clear the path. you just got to get one more to get bowl eligible, and then everything's a bonus after that. I think people will be happy if they, they've got five after that Kansas yeah, game. Yeah, I would agree. Scott, after 
after the high scoring performance on Saturday, has the outlook changed for KU football this season? Uh, it's interesting because you can kind of make yeah. the argument that it has a little bit. I mean, no one is expecting this Kansas football team to be bowl eligible. Now, look, last year this team was in a position where five games, counting that K-State game that was like three to nothing or something like that at the half, there were five games there for the taking. Kansas won, I believe, three of them. And that goes back to Nichols State as well. Right. That KU lost in overtime in the opener. And again, you find yourself in a, in a similar situation where, you know, who knows if Brent Deerman is the offensive coordinator the whole time, does Kansas lose 12-7 to Coastal Carolina? No. Probably not. Now, if you play that game, does Kansas surprise Boston College? The answer is probably not once again. So uh, it, it's hard to look at individual losses and say, oh, that should have been a win. That should have been a win. But... The fact of the matter is the wins or, or the opportunities, you think about West Virginia too, uh, those are three of them, West Virginia, Coastal Carolina, and Texas, that Kansas was in a position at least to compete. And again, this is where you notice the differences. Obviously, the, the level of talent on the team has not dramatically changed. You're talking about going from the David Beatty coach team to the Les Miles coach team with really no, I mean, one short recruiting class and short recruiting period in between. You're not going to notice a, a big gulf in talent between, uh, you know, coach to coach. But what you're seeing is a difference in schematics, especially with the new offensive staff. You're seeing a team that competes, a team that looks more prepared, basically. And it's funny with the kind of context of David Beatty sort of helping out the Texas staff. And then this game happens and it ends up being really close. But I think the Kansas outlook, if Kansas wins one of its next two games, I mean, certainly if Kansas won two for two, but, but one of the next two, Texas Tech, K-State, that would change a yeah. lot of the thoughts, not mm -hmm. only from fans, but I think around the team, it would put Kansas ahead of where I think a lot of people thought they were going to be. Year one of Les Miles, people will take moral victories. Texas was one of them. It, it, they could get a couple more here, too. You know, you talk about the offense as a whole being so much different. Carter Stanley mm -hmm. was different. He was a really good quarterback in yeah. Austin. And, and one of the things he did that I think is maybe the hardest to do, not necessarily for a quarterback, but for a coach, is say, I'm going to let my quarterback through a 50-50 ball and trust my playmakers yeah. to come down with it. Andrew Parchment, Dalen Charlotte, both made catches in that game that if you're the defense you probably live with but that's what the Kansas offense needs to be it needs to have trust in Carter Stanley or else you're hindering him gotta make plays mm -hmm. and now we step out of bounds well Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes was injured in Thursday's Chiefs win over the Denver Broncos how bad is this for Kansas City well it's bad but mm -hmm. you know he's been playing on that gimpy ankle uh, so a dislocated kneecap will keep him out three four weeks now they've got some tough opponents they got Green Bay coming mm -hmm. in uh, so they'll probably lose some of these games but it's not Nothing that they can't overcome eventually, and getting him back midseason healthy would be huge for the team. Your question was a good one, though. Should he have even been playing in a short week game on a Thursday night? Yeah, you know what's interesting? I, I personally don't have a problem with the quarterback sneak. The Patriots run that play with Tom Brady in short yardage all the time. It is the most efficient short, uh, short yardage fourth down play in general. And Patrick Mahomes didn't get injured because he was driving into the pile trying to extend for extra yards. It was kind of a freak play. A guy yeah. fell on his leg. However... I was of the belief, at least my own personal opinion before the game, that maybe you just hold him out of that one and say, hey, it's a short week, it's Denver, give this guy a chance to rest up. Now, obviously, Patrick Mahomes is a competitor. He's never going to go yeah. for that. He's never going to want to sit out. But, uh, man, I, I think you could make the argument when you have a guy like Patrick Mahomes who, if you redrafted the NFL, like today, he might be the first pick. Right. It's, it's incredible what he means for this team. But... You know, he's still going to be there and, mm -hmm. and help this team out psychologically. He'll, he'll I, I be think, back. I think they'll be fine. He'll, he'll be, be, be back fine. soon. Well, now let's hear from the fans. Our fan question this week is... <sighs> Tyler Griever sat in for Scott me last week and talked about how dominant his Missouri Tigers were playing oh, Saturday. Man. Saturday, the Tigers lost at Vanderbilt. Should the drive, I'm adding this, and specifically Fitz, apologize for talking about Missouri? That's I've got a, I got a statement here to read. <laughs> uh, we would like to apologize to all of our viewers mm -hmm. for the trauma they suffered last week mm -hmm. when Tyler Griever talked about how mighty and dangerous his <laughs> Missouri Tigers were. They lost uh -huh. at Vanderbilt. He was wrong. Mm -hmm. We will never have him on again. <laughs> never again. It's in the, it'll be written into the background Which next is week. a lie, mm -hmm. but he's not on this week as punishment. Yes. Scott's back. That's what it was. Remember to ask us your questions on our Facebook page and on Twitter at The Drive 13. And we when you return, we will look at our We're predictions sorry. here. On the so drive. Sorry. Diets and workouts, you've done the work, so why can't you get to your goal weight? 
That's because up to 70% of your weight is predetermined by your genetics. So while you've been told that it's all about your willpower, you're actually fighting your biology. Don't do it alone. Found's doctor design program uses medication as part of a treatment plan that targets your body's unique biological needs so that your body works with you and not against you. Take the quiz at joinfound.com to see if Found's weight loss program is right for you. Welcome back as we head down the home stretch of this week's show. Now it's time to take a look at our predictions. I don't really want to do it, but the folks at Vanderbilt sponsor this, so we have to do it. Mm. They're your work boot center. They need to give me better picking boots. And remember to make your weekly predictions at thedriveshow.com. Here are last week's results. Scott, you take over. I can't, well, I can't deal with this. Viewers went two and one. I went two and one. Fitz, one and two. But a rebound coming this week. I can, I can feel it. Three and zero this week. I picked against K-State, folks, and I deserve to be one and two. And this is not a good week. I let the Missouri stuff in mm. last week, and now I'm still at 33%. Let's go on to this week's picks, and we're going to start with Texas, which is, believe it or not, uh, yeah. plus two and a half at TCU. So TCU's favored by two and a half points. I'll take Texas straight up. I don't. I don't need the points. I'm going with Texas too. I yeah. don't quite understand this line at all. Yeah. Next is Texas Tech minus six at Kansas. You so have. Tech's a six-point favorite at Kansas. I'm taking KU straight up, which I, may not be good news for KU. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go with Kansas, too, and not feel great about it. I think we'll be different on this next one, okay. though. Okay, and our last game of the week is Oklahoma, minus 21 and a half. So will the Sooners win at Kansas State by 22 or more points? I say, unfortunately, yes. I think K-State, if they can control the clock, that's the biggest thing. Kansas only lost by 25 K-State's got to lose by a little bit less. I mean, if you're really following my gambling advice here, you need to stop doing it. Make your picks over at thedriveshow.com. You're better than me. I know you are. It's now time for our On the Clock segment. And On the Clock is sponsored by Carpet One. Buy local for a strong local community. And we start with Scott chasing the fog, doesn't it? A lot of people look at the KU football defense as to why they lost the last game. They gave up 50 points, sure. But I see special teams issues in a coach in Les Miles who should be specializing in that area. He's talked about wanting to have dominant special teams. Well, Jayhawks had three kickoffs out of bounds. Those three kickoffs out of bounds resulted in touchdowns eventually the other way for Texas. Mm. KU had a field goal that missed. KU had a blocked field goal. KU had a blocked extra point that was returned for a two-point conversion. That kind of rare rule. You, you combine all that, that's a nine-point swing on the kicks alone. The kickoff out of bounds, you never know how those possessions play out. Every yard you give them past the 20, it boosts your scoring chances in ways you wouldn't expect. How many 80-yard scoring drives do you see? Not many. How many 60, 70? You see quite a bit of those. Special teams have to get cleaned up for Kansas moving forward or they're not going to win another game this year. Well, let's stick with this theme because special teams were big for Kansas State. And they have been for a long time in Manhattan, but Chris Kleiman's team got a blocked punt that led to a touchdown. They had a nice return and a kickoff. Uh, and then um, they just had the most incredible punting performance I've ever seen from Devin Anktel, uh, who probably is on course to be the Big 12 punter of the year, if not an All-American, averaging 50 yards a punt on seven punts, basically, in the game, including pinning uh, TCU deep and flipping the field repeatedly in this contest. Special teams have to be good for a team like Kansas State to win. It's in their current state, and as Scott said, for a team like KU, too. So if you don't pay attention to the details, the details will cost you dearly. And we saw in the results for the two state teams this week. Oh. Fun fact on Devin Angtel, yeah. once dunked a basketball in high school, received a technical foul for that dunk. He That's didn't say anything. Folks. That's it for this week's edition of The Drive. We will see you next week right here and all week on social media. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.